as long as I remember, I've had a fascination for our oceans, whether it was by surfing waves or seeing what lay beneath their surface. This passion for our blue planet has dictated my whole life so far. By pursuing this passion, I managed to make a living by sharing the ocean's beauty to photography and film. I started out by wanting to show just how beautiful our world is and highlight underwater ecosystems, just like this coral reef here, with the hopes of educating and inspiring people to care a little bit more about our blue planet. Throughout my quest in documenting these wonders of our underwater world, I began to realize just how important these blue parts on our globe are for our very own survival. Let me give you a few facts here. All human life is affected by our oceans. They cover 71% of the planet. They feed us, they help regulate the globe's temperature, they provide us with energy, with entertainment. Coral reefs are continuing to prove they're an important source for new medicines being developed. And about 50% of the oxygen we breathe comes from the ocean. Think about that when you're sitting here and breathing. Oh, they are also one of the largest carbon sinks on the planet. And on top of all that, about one billion people, largely living in developing countries, rely on fish as their primary source of protein. In certain communities, it's very easy to see their connection with the ocean and just how big of a role it plays in their lives. I've met with seaweed farmers in Southeast Asia who, after decades of using destructive fishing methods, resorted to this more sustainable and more profitable way of life. I've also seen fishermen in Tanzania who go out and look for whale sharks. Not to hunt these beautiful big fish, but they've realized that these whale sharks and the schools of fish thereafter feed on the same prey. I found out it's not photographers, it's actually these small little shrimps. <laughs> but I've also met a community of Bajau or sea gypsies who could no longer use their traditional fishing methods as there simply wasn't enough fish left in the sea where they live. Instead, they have to resort to compressor diving to catch any fish at all. This dangerous practice, as you can see this fisherman do here, is you know, the little plastic tube in his mouth is providing him with air that's supplied from the surface by an old compressor that his wife was operating. Now these compressors, they often break, they're full of fumes, so you can imagine it's a very unhealthy and dangerous practice. And the people in his village, many of the men have had been in accidents, some have passed away, some are paralyzed. So a very dangerous practice to eke out a living. So even though our oceans are so important to us, we haven't done very well in preserving them. Overfishing, a practice where we take more fish than can possibly be replenished, happens on a daily basis. Coastal pollution is creating ocean dead zones that might never recover. A changing climate due to excessive carbon dioxide in our atmosphere is causing sea levels to rise and oceans to become more acidic, which directly impacts coral reefs around the world. And these coral reef structures Think about them as the buildings in a big city, like New York, for example. Now imagine this city without these buildings, or only damaged buildings. This is the equivalent of an underwater scene like that. It's kind of grim and no life left. What's supposed to be a thriving ecosystem is just completely empty. Knowing all this was happening to our oceans, I started to feel an obligation to not only document the beauty, but also highlight the destruction of our marine resources. While this isn't as fun and definitely not as glamorous as photographing pristine ecosystems or filming charismatic marine megafauna, I found that by working together with people that were equally passionate about ocean conservation, yet had different skill sets than me, we could actually make a difference in conserving this blue marble we live on. Making this realization had a huge impact on my life as a photographer and filmmaker, and I started to seek out scientists and different conservation groups and work together with them to shed light on the important work they were doing, kind of creating more awareness, maybe changing a few minds here or there. And I was positively surprised to find out how big of a role these storytelling images and video could play in all this. In 2014, I came across quite a fascinating story. I was living in the Philippines back then, and Typhoon Haiyan had just hit the country, causing widespread destruction. Part of my work was covering the aftermath in order to raise funds for the people affected by this natural disaster. When we came across one island, it seemed that the locals were recovering quite well on their own terms. 
The main reason being was that they still had their livelihood. They might have lost their homes and their island was heavily affected by the typhoon, but their livelihood was intact. And here on this island called Malapascua, the locals heavily depended on the presence of treasure sharks. So divers from all over the world come here to see these beautiful, long-tailed, charismatic animals, and they pay very good money to do so. Here you see a group of divers and one of these sharks passing by very close. And um, just in case you're wondering, this isn't a breakfast buffet for sharks. These sharks are actually very harmless, like pretty much all sharks, and rarely take an interest in us. But tourism like this, though, brings in a lot of money. And for the locals in Malapascua, it was more than enough to rebuild their homes and recover from this typhoon on their own terms, unlike some other communities that mainly relied on fishing as a primary source of income. Oddly enough, though, even though these sharks were worth so much more alive than dead, they were still fished quite heavily. Knowing this was happening, I started working together with different conservation groups on campaigns to try to get more protection for these sharks. With their help, we managed to present the story of Malapascua and its sharks at the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species. It's an event where world leaders come together and they decide on which species will gain more or less protection based on certain criteria. Kind of like a Noah's Ark of conservation. So this was a good success because last year these sharks gained more global protection and are now fully protected in the Philippines. This really showed me that when passionate people come together and work on a common goal, positive change is really possible. It's not only possible, it's very likely to happen. So I'll continue to find those people to work together with and do my very best in conserving this beautiful blue planet that we call home. Thank you.